everyone, it is the Charming Giraffe, and today we are going to continue the series on how to seal paintings using sealer that you brush on instead of spray on. So today's will be this Minowax um, Polycrylic Protective Finish. This is the Clear Gloss. Um, this is an older can that I had. It can go bad. I don't know if this one had gone bad, but I was too worried about it, so I didn't use it. But I, the other one's already open and ready to go, so I can't show you the instructions on that one, so I just grabbed this one. Um, so you'll want to um, stir well before and regularly during use. Um, don't shake it, which is really tempting to do because it's so little. You can just like shake it up, but no, don't do that. Um, the finish appears milky um, in the can, like that. Looks milky, but it does appear crystal clear. Um, apply thin coats. Um, don't overbrush, just like with the uh, Liquitex. Um, normally, I guess this is used on wood, so it talks about sanding. Um, you want to let it cure for at least two hours before you do that. Um, then obviously remove any dust, um, apply a second coat, um, and then after your final coat, allow at least three hours before light handling and at least 24 hours before normal use. So just some instructions there. It's got a lot of uh, information, but that's the basics of it. So to stir, I just have this old knife that's been used for all kinds of craft projects. It's no longer used for food, and that's all I do, and, and I just try my best to do that. It also works really well to uh, open the can, so that's why I use it. Now I have not used this brush with this can before, so please hold. Okay, so I just got a little container. I've put some of it in there. I'll dump it back in if we don't use it all, which I'm not sure how much we're going to need, because um, I do just brush this on. So, um, I've had heard of people having issues with brush strokes with this. It is self-leveling, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, it's kind of a toss-up. I think I might be overcritical of mine, so I'm not sure if I actually get brush strokes or not. Um, this isn't the typical brush that I have used in the past, so I'm giving this a try. Normally, the brush I've been using is one similar to this but about a four inch brush or at least a three inch brush actually. It's probably in the in the paintbrush uh, bucket over there, but I did not grab it for the video. It is highly flammable, so do not torch this. Um, I have not tried it because it says it's highly flammable, but uh, I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> the bubbles do pop on their own. Um, additionally, you want to make sure you get an extremely thin layer. Um, for example, and I will show you at the end of the video what I'm talking about. Um, we're actually going to do both attempts here. We're going to do the brush on method, and then I'm going to do this pour on method as well and see what our results are. But the key is to get very, very thin layer. So if you get too much poured on, run it off because it will crack your painting. Um, I was doing some other experiments that I did not record, unfortunately, where I was using this to seal um, skins to use as like a magnet or for jewelry and I was trying to do like a thicker coat on the on the skin cut out and it um it like just cracked and it was pretty cool design don't get me wrong but it just wasn't what I was going for there's definitely brush strokes in that right now should level out and then with the additional coats it should even out and everything so we're gonna pour this back in here uh, wait at least two hours, maybe longer, and then come back and do our additional coats. So, we will be back in a little bit. Alright, we are back, and before we do our next coats, I wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier. So, these were some skins that I adhere, that I cut out with the one inch hole punch. They're really pretty. 
and then these magnets are one inch magnets and one side is adhesive so you just pull off that adhesive part stick your skin down and that's how that sticks and then you just do whatever you need to do to the top you can put a glass um, dome is the word I'm looking for on it you can just seal it with any kind of sealer so I had used this um, polycrylic sealer and just kind of puddled it on there and you can see how it's not smooth how it kind of like cracked in the middle of that one here's the next one and you can see how that like and it it was like a perfect little dome I used like either a syringe or something to like pull it really pretty on there so had it like dried exactly the way it would would have or the way I had it it would have been like super cool and then this one has all these little divots all over it and that's just because of how thick it was layered on there I think if I just did like a coating like I'm doing here it would not have done that and I have a lot of those <laughs> so I think I mean they both um, on this first coat ignore that <laughs> they both uh turned out really glossy but still have all those um lines in it brush strokes in it so i'm not too concerned yet at this point um i do think it was slightly easier to just pour it so i'm going to keep going with that method and see how how that works obviously this is a little bit harder to do given the container that it comes in um it has been about three hours um, maybe like 15 minutes short of three hours <laughs> so not not a perfect three hour turnaround time um, but this one was a two hour cure I believe here let's go back dries let dry for at least two hours so we should be fine on this one all right and that's all there is to that we'll come back in a few more hours and put another coat on it and hopefully the stroke the brush strokes will start to thin themselves out there's some areas on this one i didn't quite like so it just looked kind of bald i guess like there wasn't actually any um sealer on it so that's why i did that last part there so we'll be back in a few Okay, so we are back. This is after the second coat, and so far I am much less satisfied than with the um, Liquitex. There is a slew of uh, brush strokes, which I know that's a condition that a lot of people complain about with this. I really do like this type of sealer once you can get all the brush strokes out of it so we'll keep going since that was only coat number two and we'll come back well I'll do coat three you'll see me do that and then we'll come back and see what it looks like okay we are back this is after the third coat sorry you didn't get to see that um, camera malfunction there Better on the brush strokes. I can still see some, but I'm definitely happier. And um, this one was a sad, sad disaster. When I went to do the third coat, there was a hair in it. So I had to like dig it out. Not an easy task by any means. Uh, so I'm actually more impressed with, even though this one has more brush strokes, I'm more impressed with how it has set so far. Um, considering the... Uh, the amount of work I had to do to it to get the the hair out of it um, so yeah so we will uh, get started here um, last time and that's what I'll do this time is I've just been pouring it like this straight on the eyeball how much I'm gonna need it saves that extra little step of dirty enough uh, container okay, this little hair is still hanging out it needs to go away I'm gonna have to get out a new brush just to be on the safe side which may be a terrible idea we may be starting all over on brush strokes since this one's not like saturated here 
I just stuck it into the can in case that was off camera <laughs> um, to hopefully prevent a redo. But so far, it's been um, it's getting better. So we'll hope for the best. I do think I'm going the same direction as the second or as the third coat. They should be going uh, side to side, but I'm okay with that. I have a feeling we're going to need a fifth coat anyways, so we'll just see what happens. Looks like I didn't do as good of a job on the eyeball on this one. There's definitely too much on here. So, we'll scoot it off. Alright, we're going to call that one good. Uh, this one looks pretty good too. Just touch the side real fast. And then we'll come back in a couple hours and see what this one looks like. Yeah. Right, we'll see you in a few. Alright, we are back. And this was after coat four. So I'll show you. There's still some lines. Less stark than they had been. So they are starting to kind of blend together. Um, which is good. That means hopefully that we'll not have any lines anymore soon. You can still see a little bit. I don't know how many more coats this is going to take, so I'm just going to speed you up through this process, and then as soon as I'm happy with them, I'll show you the end result. So we will be back, hopefully once they're beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. This is after coat five, and that's what you just saw um, with the silence on. These are the exact same as what you just saw. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with these yet, so we're just going to let them sit here, and I will make a decision and figure it out. They're not bad. It's kind of hard to tell on the... This one's really not bad. Um, and then I see something that's really bad. <laughs> Can you guys see that? I don't even know. Like they're like I'm not even sure how that could have um come from the actual varnish. It's too perfect. <laughs> they're like little bubbles and it has bubbles when I um when I brush it on, but they seem to go away, but these are like perfect all in a row. See that? Really weird. And then this one, the only area I'm I mean there's a lot but it's kind of um almost like smoothed out I guess um but this down here in this corner is not good so I'm just gonna let it sit here think on it I'll probably come back and put some more coats on um but as soon as I'm happy with it I'll show it to you
All right, hey everyone, we are back. I'm still not happy fully, especially on this one, and I will explain what happened. So, as you saw just before this, I did this other method where you pour it on and you just tilt it around. So I poured it on this one originally, tilted it, tilted it onto this one so I wasn't wasting it. Um, I still have those weird dots right here. They're smooth. Like, they're not as, like, textury, but you can still see them. Um, I think I may have liked that method better, slightly. Um, I, and whereas you may weigh some on runoff, it's probably still less than brushing on 17 coats until you get all the brush marks out. Um, what was a problem is once I got them on here, I had to pour more on, and it was very unlevel. So I propped it up to try to, like, level it out, and it didn't work. And so then I went, I stupidly went and put a brush through it after it had set for like 15 to 30 minutes, so it was all gummy. Luckily, it doesn't look like it really um, fogged up the painting, but there's brush strokes again, so that was um, a fail on my part. I'm gonna keep working on it, but I wanted to come and show you our final-ish product, because if I keep going, this video will be an hour long, and no one wants to watch that. So, definitely need to practice some more, maybe get some different tools uh, as you can see, I left the brush out. <laughs> Oopsies. Yeah, it's no good anymore, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, this is another way. And once you practice and get better at it than I am, I'm sure it, I mean, it's beautiful. You can see how glossy it is. It's just a matter of working through some of those um, issues. So definitely more difficult than some of the other ones um, as far as that is concerned. Like you can just see here, see that, all of that right there. So, yeah, we're going to call these good. I might do some more videos on this in the future and give you some better tips once I learn them. If you have any tips for me, leave them in the comments and I will try them out. I do want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share and do what makes you happy.